Hello, good evening everyone. How are you? I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy out there. We are struggling here in North Carolina to kind of find our way and figure out a good balance of continuing to be accessible to the people that we care for versus protecting folks. So it is an unprecedented time for sure. But one good thing about our classroom here on Facebook is that we are perfectly safe and quarantined in our own spaces, but yet together and we are sharing and learning together. I am so privileged to be such a uh, special, in such a special group of people in our community here in our Facebook world and also in the broader brain health community. So what we did last week on I Care For Your Brain, uh, we talked about four different brain health community partners that I feel very aligned with in terms of what we are trying to do between ourselves here at I Care For Your Brain and what they do. And we talk to you about these four special people. Hey, Jerry, you're, you guys are up first. Uh, we talked about Neuro Nerds, the podcast, specifically um, Joe, one of the great leaders over there, and what a wonderful, genuine, warm, information-sharing, support-giving guy he is. We talked about Heal the Brain with Jane, who is a wonderful occupational therapist who has a podcast called No Brainer, who has a social media presence, who does a lot of stuff with getting good information about the return of function to everyone in the community. We talked about Stroke Camp, which is a super awesome program where people from all around the country come and have the focus of having a good time and relaxing and being social in a way that is accessible to them. And then we concluded with Identity Theft, the book, and Stroke Forward, the nonprofit, which is really the story of Dr. Deborah Meyerson and her journey, hey Mark, hey Fanny, and her journey back to wholeness and wellness after her unexpected catastrophic stroke. So what we're gonna do tonight is I'm gonna tell you four more community people that we just absolutely love. Hey, Emily, that we absolutely love and we feel again like we are on this brain health education and empowerment mission together and I want you to know about them so you can access all of their wisdom on social media too. So the first one that is up is our buddies, Jerry Wald and Aaron Avila over at Stroke TV. Now these guys have been so incredibly supportive to us at I Care For Your Brain. I have been on their show a number of times and they are always very um, generous with their praise of what we're doing and really let us know that we are a desperately needed voice in the stroke community that we need more medical providers, more doctors, more neuropsychologists who genuinely care, who want to share their expertise on social media for folks who don't have insurance, who are underinsured, who have run out of benefits, and who acknowledge that the brain health recovery journey is not finite. It's not something that you uh, get through an eight week program or two years or even eight years. It's something you're gonna be living with and thriving with for the rest of your life, really. So they have some very important values that guide what they do. One of the big things that I love about Jerry and Aaron is they're really focused on reducing isolation. And again, you hear these themes in the people that we are telling you about. They know from personal experience what it feels like to be someone living with a stroke, what it feels like to all of a sudden have your life disrupted, very easy to feel like you're all alone. So a lot of what they do is they try to reach out to people and share their personal stories, which I love, and also get people to tell their stories. And so the idea here is that you really matter. You are not alone. They're also really good about raising stroke awareness on the global level. That is a huge thing that we have to be talking about is this concept of brain is time and that we cannot delay getting people to acute medical evaluation because of things like clot busting medications, the importance of uh, early intervention when we know a catastrophic thing like a stroke has happened in the brain. So I really appreciate those guys very much. Stroke TV Foundation, they have a show on Facebook. Please go to their Facebook page. We'll post um, a link to them in the show uh, comments right when I'm done talking or maybe as I'm talking. Uh, someone's doing that, but um, go definitely support these guys. They are super wonderful, awesome dudes. 
Uh, the next person that I want to let you know about um, is actually a really awesome guy named Bill Monroe. Bill has a podcast called Strokecast and he, very similar to Joe and Jerry and Aaron that I've talked to you about, he also had a stroke at a, at a young age. In 2017, he had a blood clot uh, happen in the subcortical deep part of his brain called the basal ganglia, which affected his left side, so arm and leg. He has, of course, been through tons of occupational therapy, tons of physical therapy, has learned to rewalk, is still really working on some fine motor stuff with his hand and fingers. But what he really tries to do in his podcast, I think, is to really put a younger person's perspective. You know, what is it like to try to go back to work after a stroke? Um, how is it that he, um, he had a very interesting perspective in that he had worked in, um, software and media and product development before and so he really understands the human technology interface and so he talks a lot he always makes a joke about like how do you learn how to peel a banana with one hand you know um, what is it like to try to go through recovery as a as a younger patient and all that that means so i really love his podcast called stroke cast i was on his podcast a few months ago it was episode 81 we'll probably post a link to that as well. I really like just listening to Bill's voice on the podcast. I actually really like his style. I like his approach. He's a great interviewer. He's had very meaningful discussions with people. And really he picks topics that I think are very much of practical value. And that's, that's a big part of what we like to do. So I think we're very aligned in that way. He also has another project I wanted to make sure you know about. And the reason I want you to know this is because many of you are doing the very smart and therapeutic thing of telling your story. I love that. I think that that really gives a personal touch to stroke education, to brain injury education. Stories really compel people to action. So I know that many of you are out there wanting to start your own podcast, who have a Facebook page where you're trying to get people together and public speaking is a part of this mission. Now, public speaking is not something that comes natural to most of us. We have to really work at it. Practice definitely helps. But he also has a podcast called Two Minute Talk Tips that I really like. And the whole idea is in as little as two minutes a week, you can become a more effective public speaker. So I think that um, you would really appreciate that as well. It's not necessarily in the brain health community, but it's something that for any of us who want to do something involving the public, it really, really helps to understand how to speak more effectively and compellingly. So I think you would really appreciate that. The next one, number three, is modern manual therapy. This um, is a, led by a very uh, compelling gentleman named Dr. E, they call him. He's a doctor of physical therapy. And how we got involved with Dr. E is that we started to look into who had the very best mirror box on the market that we could recommend to our people. And so we started a little email dialogue back and forth between the two of us, and I follow him on Instagram. He is someone I really, really want you to follow if you are on Instagram because he is a truth teller. He clearly is in the helping profession for the right reasons. He will not steer you wrong. I think that he does an excellent job of dispelling myths, which is something that I really support and giving people good scientifically based advice, even if it's not necessarily the thing that people want to hear. So one example that I feel like I've learned from his Instagram is that sometimes rest when it comes to physical injury is actually not the best idea and it's not what the evidence tells us we should be doing. Uh, specifically for, for knee pain, for example. He had a really great post recently about how it's really important to actually activate those muscles and to make sure you're getting back into a routine of use. It would be much easier in some ways, right? If we thought that, oh, I just need to rest and ice it and you know maybe put some heating pad on it. And I'm, I'm sure there is a place and a time for that. But he also is just telling you the God's honest truth about what you need to do to get a return back on your function which of course makes you feel better and makes you just have a higher quality of life. So these are the people that we get the mirror boxes from. He actually has 
um, kind of an extension of modern manual therapy, um, which is where you can actually buy the mirror boxes from. Uh, we'll post a link to that. And we've actually set up something with him where people can get a discount. Um, but there's basically rehab products that, that he sells. And so he has very high quality products on there for a great price. Does 100% um, satisfaction guarantee within the first 30 days really just has excellent content, really values the relationship between therapist and client. And that's something that I talk about a lot, which is if you don't have a therapist or a neuropsychologist, chances are you're getting some of those needs met from your physical therapist, from your occupational therapist, from your speech therapist. They are there with you when you're trying to do very difficult things. And a lot of times those are the people coaching you. Those are the people that are encouraging you they see your tears they see your victory um, it's a very important relationship and if the therapist the rehab therapist doesn't accept that and doesn't embrace that there's a huge opportunity lost and so what i really like about dr e and what he's doing is that not only does he focus on you know body mechanics and cardiovascular health and brain body connections but he really puts the person at the forefront of his practice and his care. He does a lot of training of other rehab professionals. And so if you are someone in the PT or OT field, please go on his website, uh, Mon Modern Manual, pardon me, themanualtherapist.com. We'll post that and um, follow him and, and take his trainings because he's a super cool guy in practice and in philosophy. Okay. The final Braden Health community partner that we're gonna talk about is a local gem. This is so important to know about these people if you are in North Carolina or you're able to travel here. These are the people at Triangle Aphasia Program in Cary, North Carolina, and we lovingly call them TAP. TAP was started in 2003 by a speech and language pathologist named Maura Silverman, and she had worked with folks with neurological impairments for some time. She really wanted to start an aphasia specific program under this model called a life participation model. And the idea is you needed to build up real world skills like conversation uh, abilities to be able to really stay connected in society. She also really wanted to include the village of the person with aphasia. So what do I mean by that? That means you don't just treat the person. You don't just treat the one who has aphasia, you include their village. So you include their family, their friends, their community. They were one of the first people that had specific programming to help the children of people with aphasia. And I'm gonna tell you about a specific program like that um, in a minute. But over time they grew and they got more and more healthcare providers, got more families involved, and they were able to become a nonprofit. And it's, it's really grown beautifully in the last few years. They offer three different types of services. So on the individual level, they do things like uh, speech therapy, conversation groups, you know, music therapy, singing groups. And the whole idea is to help people reach their communication potential. When you have aphasia, you quickly learn that communication is not just oral language. Communication is body language. Communication is eye contact. Communication can be writing. It can be pointing. The essence of communication is making your needs known to the other person. And there's many creative ways to go about getting to that goal. And so that's what people who study aphasia are so good at is in recognizing that communication is so much broader than just word finding, okay? So for families, they do a lot of training, they have support groups, and they're really a gateway to other resources in the community. They also are really good about trying to reduce barriers within the community for people with aphasia. So they actually have a program called Learning to Speak Aphasia, and this is for businesses, for uh, healthcare professionals, even employers. And the whole idea is to basically understand how people with aphasia can best advocate for themselves to participate in life fully, but to also have their community partners want to come to the table to learn as well, because it really takes two to make that relationship work. They have something called the TAP Unlimited's Children's Program, and this is actually very, very important work. So they recognize that not only does aphasia affect the person, like I said, but it can also put people at risk for isolation and what they call role changes. So 
you know, you have to think about not only how difficult it is to lose the ability to read or to speak in the same way that you did before, but language is what can bind relationships. And so these people can also lose roles, like with the concept of thinking of what is a grandparent? Well, for many people, a grandparent is reading books to their grandchildren when they go to sleep. We need to stay committed to people's engagement with life and finding workarounds, even if the same way of doing it doesn't work anymore. These folks are really good at trying to find alternative models to keep people engaged in their very important relationships. So they developed a puppet show that they have a DVD of called Princess Crumpet and the Baker of Battertown. And this is basically for preschool kids and elementary school age and really just helping them understand what it's like to have a loved one with aphasia and how they can best help. So what I love about that is it's in the business of preserving relationships and it's once again reducing some of the unnecessary suffering that we see happens in brain health communities because of things we can better control once people know better, like social isolation you know, mood symptoms because people aren't given the opportunity to relearn how to uh, be in community, the ability to figure out how to stay in relationships with people and not just, you know, let those things dwindle up. And then of course we find ourselves very alone and sad. And so I love all these programs that try really hard to use creative science-based methods to keep people engaged. That is very, very key. So I'm actually going to be back with you next Wednesday, coronavirus or not. And our topic for next week is going to be nature based rehabilitation. I've been doing some research on this and it is so interesting and important. And it's something that some of the more progressive European countries are already doing. Sweden actually is really taking the prize with making sure that people are incorporated back into natural environments, even as early as the acute inpatient rehab programs. But this is something I want you to know about that you can incorporate into your never ending ongoing recovery from whatever brain health thing it is that you are dealing with. So if you liked these suggestions today, please go support these people. They like me thrive on positive reinforcement. We want to know that what we're doing actually is making a difference to you and that you want medical professionals and survivors coming together trying to figure out how we can move the needle on brain health care forward. So please share this. Um, if you haven't followed our page, please do that. It really makes a difference for how much power we have trying to go forward and to get a bigger audience if we see that you guys like and follow the page. So thank you guys so much. I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. And until then, keep Purelling and keep yourself safe. Bye-bye.